For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's plain and simple. A name that you should know is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Bible tells us to repent. Jesus said, repent for the kingdom is at hand. We're not after a kingdom. But we do know one thing according to the scriptures that Jesus is coming. I advise you to repent before he does come. Because when he does come, he comes for his bride in an event called the rapture. And there'll be seven years of tribulation to follow. And then seven years is not for the Gentiles. It's not for the heathen. There are a time, a period called Jacob's trouble. And you're not going to outdo the beast. You're not going to follow many of these movies about the tribulation and the Antichrist. But salvation is now. Because at no time are we told when Jesus is going to come for his bride. He said in the meantime, going all the world and preach the gospel. That Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. And at any moment, once Jesus Christ comes for his bride, it will not be believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You will have to rely on your works and your conduct as a nation to the nation of Israel. But why not get it settled now? Why not repent of your sins and be righteous by God through Jesus Christ? Because you are a sinner. For the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's you. And if you don't think it's you, the Bible has proclaimed it is you. It is me. We are sinners in need of the love of God, and that's Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Glory and honor and salvation is wrought by what Jesus Christ has done and what we cannot do. There is none righteous. And yet God says, be ye holy, for I am holy. And we can't be holy. Again, for we sin. And the wages of sin is death. We must be born again. We must repent. And the mere definition of repent is to be sorry for our sins and to turn away. To make a U-turn. Another fine word for salvation is a word that is pardon. You need a pardon for your crime of your sins, for all have sinned. But in law, in the dictionary, and in written in the Holy Word, a pardon cannot be given to you if you're not guilty. A guilty person may receive a pardon. If you were to ask 10 criminals in jail, and I've asked them, are you guilty? Oh, no, no, no. I was framed. I was this. I was that. No pardon. That the pardon will come when you repent of God, the sinner that you are, and the sins that you do. And we all have different sins. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
And the Bible records in the book of Hebrew that there is pleasure. There is pleasure in the book of Hebrew for a season. But what do your sins get you? They get you a grave. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There is nothing you can do to appease God for Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The Bible also says, not of works. We're saved by grace, not of works. At least any man should boast. Now, if you were to think, well, I'm good enough. I can please God when the Bible says there is none that doeth good. So the Bible already proclaims your righteousness of your works can't do it. The fact is, if we could save ourselves, the birth of Jesus Christ and the death of Jesus Christ and the resurrection of Jesus Christ would be just foolish tales. A waste of time of God's valuable time. And God does not waste time. God does not do anything in vain. And the fact is that Jesus was born in Jerusalem of a virgin, Bethlehem. He lived a sinless life and suffered and died upon that cross according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures it's because you can't save yourself behold the lamb of god which take away the sin of the world the lamb of god removes sin religion can't when jesus said i am the way he didn't say it as a baptist he didn't say it as a catholic he didn't say it being Jewish. He said it because he is the way. And you got to be careful because the Apostle Paul says there's another Jesus. There's another spirit. There's another gospel. Don't be fooled. The gospel of Jesus Christ is that Jesus suffered and died according to the scriptures. And was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. And when somebody teaches you otherwise, they and you are in great error of deception. Because the way of God is through Jesus Christ. The way that God approves is Jesus Christ. The finished works of Jesus Christ. The gloriousness of Jesus Christ. The righteousness of Jesus Christ. The simplicity of Jesus Christ. It's all about Jesus Christ. And that fact is the name of Jesus can be called out in vain. And yet Jesus Christ can be called out for salvation. Believe on the Lord Jesus and thou shalt be saved. When Thomas said, my Lord, my God. Jesus Christ who is God. Jesus Christ, 100% man, 100% God. The virgin birth of Jesus, without any male. The Holy Spirit coming upon Mary. And Christ being born. Being born as we are, as we are being born. And with birth comes death. We are born to die. The wages of sin is death. We're born in sin. We are sinners. And that will graduate our lives to the grave. That will move to that higher expectation of death because we sin. And yet the Bible records that there is an afterlife. The afterlife is not... You know, we just die and we rot in a hole for all eternity. The afterlife is there's a heaven by Jesus Christ. And there's hell.
fail by anything but Jesus or nothing. You can do nothing to go to hell or you can do all kinds of things to go to hell. But if you're to repent and put your faith in Jesus Christ in His finished work, you're able to get to heaven and get to the Father by the one that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And with the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world, you are able to get your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And what is that Lamb's Book of Life? It's like if you come down to Daytona Beach as a visitor, and you stay in one of our hotels, you go up to the desk and say, Hi, I have reservations. My name is... And they look up your name and say, Yep, you've got reservations. We see your name on the computer screen. We see your name in the book or on a card, wherever it be. But yes, you have reservations to stay here. Here is your room key. Enjoy our facilities. And the last book of life is when we get our name placed in that book by the finished work of Jesus Christ alone. And when we get to heaven, you won't find Peter at the pearly gate. You will find the fact is that Christian will die and be absent from the, from the body and present with the Lord. And your name in the Lamb's Book of Life will get you into heaven. The reservations into the Lamb's Book of Life must be done before you die. It cannot be put in after you die. You can't say, well, I'll live my life and I'll die, then I'll get right. That don't work. You say, well, I know somebody came back to, from death. They didn't really die. Death is when you, that's it, not to come back. Vital signs and everything stops permanently. You came back, that's not really death. Because the Bible says death would be you pass on to heaven or you pass on to hell. Well, I know somebody who went to hell and probably there was some drug treatment. Because the Bible way is to, to go into hell and to see hell is you have to literally die and you don't come out of hell. There's only one man had done that that is recorded in the scriptures and that is Jonah. And Jonah was to be a sign to the Israelites, for the Jews require a sign is that as Jonas was three days and three nights in the heart of the whale, so will Jesus be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, hell. And Jonah went to hell. But he was resurrected out of hell. Jesus went to hell. And he was resurrected by, Jesus, by God. You must have God who was also human and yet God but also human who suffered and died according to the scripture and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures and that same God, that same Savior Jesus Christ went into hell and deposited our sins went across the abyss to Abraham's bosom and is now seated at the right hand of the Father today. And many times you'll go into a church and your Jesus is still nailed to a cross. That's not the biblical Jesus. The biblical Jesus is he's seated at the right hand of the Father right now, Acts chapter 1. is needed of your sins. You cannot say one, two, three, and I'll, you know, this prayer and get into heaven. You must repent. You must plead to God for a pardon of the guilt of guilt, being guilty of your sin. There is no pardon without being guilty. Now you can have the very words of life, very words of the mouth of God to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Or you can have anything else. You can have nothing else. The way of education will not get you into heaven. 
For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A mighty king in the book of Proverbs says, I don't even understand the ways of holy. And you cannot know them either without Jesus Christ. Without the divine scriptures of the King James Bible. But your very first step to get to know God is you've got to come to God as a sinner that you are and repent of your sins to get that pardon, which can only be achieved by you being guilty. And we all have a common denominator of sin. And I know people think that there are different degrees of sin, but there isn't in the eyes of God for all have sinned. We all need a pardon, but you can only get that pardon by you telling God you're guilty. We've all lied. We're all liars. That is a sin. Whether it be a polka dot lie, a white lie, a black white lie, or a pink lie, we're all liars. I'll tell you the most biggest lie that's coming up pretty soon. Easter Bunny and Easter Bunny Eggs are a lie. Bunnies don't make eggs, they make jelly beans. Little chocolate ones. And you don't want to eat them. I'll tell you another lie you will have. You will say, Happy Easter. Our Easter service. You're mispronouncing that woman's name. Let's get her name right. She's called Esther. And she's the great god of sex of the pagan world. That's why you have little chocolate eggs, that's why you have bunnies, you know, the, the rabbit dies. But the S-Star Festival that you and your church are going to celebrate, that's a lie. That comes out of Babylon. That doesn't come out of the Bible. Yes. So there's a lie right there. There's a false witness. Another lie would be Santa Claus. The great imitation of Jesus Christ. Those are lies. The tooth fairy, these lies that we tell, tell our children. That makes you a sinner. That makes you an improper parent. The Bible says as far as parenthood, Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me. Not the Easter bunny or Easter bunny. Not the tooth fairy, not Santa Claus. But you're supposed to bring your children unto Jesus. Everything else is a lie. I mentioned a few weeks ago, what about dishonoring your parents when the Bible says in both Testaments, honor thy mother and father? We all stand guilty. Whether our natural parents or our adopted parents or some kind of authority we have in our childhood, we have not given them the honor that God has told us through the Holy Scripture. And you can't say, oh, I never knew. You just heard. You are now guilty. When that policeman points to that speeding sign and says the limit is this limit and you pass it, you can no longer say, officer, I never knew. Now you know. Dishonoring your parents, no matter how old you are, is a sin in both testaments. I keep the testaments, honor thy mother and father. If you have not done that 100% fully, you are a sinner. You have need of a pardon, but you've got to admit that sin of you not being a proper child that you were, male or female, no other sexes are there. you got to repent of those lies. You are a liar. Well, I am a liar. I'll give you an example of a lie. Hello, boss. I don't feel well today. I'm not coming in. Click, and you go off somewhere else. You lie to your boss. The truth would have been, boss, I don't want to come to work, and I want to do this today. That's the truth. Lying and dishonoring your parents. That's, that's, those are sins. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If you're guilty of those sins, you need a pardon. Religion cannot give you that pardon. 
You can do whatever you want to do if it's not the way of God. You can walk into a phone booth and say to a man, Oh, I have sinned. It's been such and such time since I have done this. You are placing your sins upon another sinner which God does not approve of, which will not exalt you. No matter how many Hail Marys and full of grapes. It's your faith and trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ, no other sinner. You're just adding to your sin. When you go into that, that booth with that priest to confess your sins, that is guilty of not confessing your sins to God. That's in the scriptures. You have taken the atonement of Jesus Christ and thinking another sinner can do what Jesus Christ is able to do. Religion is a sin. He say, well, don't you have religion? No, I have a, sir, I have a risen Savior who does not have anything to do with Esther. If you want to do something, get your children out of the room and look up on the internet a picture of Esther. Now you would be sick parent to show your child what Esther looks like. Esther is a lie. Esther is a religion. Esther can't save you. You know what the Bible says, uh, Ezekiel or Jeremiah, about the sunrise service? God calls it an abomination. You are not worshiping God when you look at that sunrise service. You are worshiping Baal, the Babylonian God. You have now put false gods into your life through religion. That is a sin. God said, you shall have no other gods beside me. God says, when you do, I'm a jealous God. I'm an angry God by those gods that you have. You have gods in your life that could be entertainment field of racing, sports, music, television. Those people that are honored upon posters and collectible mobilia and all kinds of things that have their faces in their pictures. The Bible says thou shalt not make no images and worship those images. You are a sinner. You need a pardon. But in order to get that pardon, you must declare to God that you have committed the sin. Oh, my favorite such and such, my favorite person, my favorite man, my favorite woman. You're guilty of having false gods. And that's a sin. You've lied and you're guilty of a false witness. You need to come to God for a pardon. And the only way you can come to God for a pardon is to repent and confess those sins that you have done and are doing. And try to forsake those sins. To please God. But you need to come to the Lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world. Your priest, your pastor, your rabbi, your whoever is unable and cannot take away your sins. Only by the blood and the testimony and the finished work of Jesus Christ that he suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. There is no other way. You are without hope when you don't have the blessed hope. And the blessed hope and the glorious hope according to the scriptures is Jesus Christ. That's your hope. That's my hope. This testimony of getting up and preaching Jesus Christ is the testimony. I am washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. I am saved. I know where I'm going to go when I die. I have the full assurance of the word of God in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. I tried the Catholic. That didn't work. I tried the drugs. That didn't work. I had the alcohol. That didn't work. But Jesus works. For Jesus saves. And only Jesus saves. Only Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit can you get the love, joy, peace, long suffering, the patience. Oh, I need work on that one. How's your patience? Oh, brother, I'm saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and yet patience. That's my sin. How about you? How do you react when that light turns red? 
You mean I'm going to be judged for that? Yeah, patience. Imagine going to hell because you will not trust Jesus Christ to deal with your patience because of a red light. It's a sin. Impatience is a sin. Not one point did you ever read about Jesus, or will you ever read about Jesus, that he grabbed those and come on, let's go to hurry, hurry, come on, come on, yeah, hurry. Well, quite opposite, the disciples were impatient. Well, let's feed all these people. Oh, Lord, send them to the store. Come on, get on. Who touched me? Lord, they're throwing it as their elbows in the face. Like, let's get out of here. He said, no, somebody touched me. I need to find who that person is. And when that woman came to Jesus, she said to Jesus, it was me. I'm the guilty one that touched you. Jesus said, sent her free. Sent her away with hope, with healing. She would not have gotten that full blessing of reward if she did not ever pardon by Jesus to say, I'm the one that did it. You're not going to touch God if you don't reach out to Jesus Christ. If you do not repent of your sins through the blood of Jesus Christ. If you do not receive that pardon from Calvary's cross of Jesus Christ. There were three crosses on Calvary. What cross hang our Savior according to the scriptures? One cross, ah, let him die. Ah, we're guilty. Ah, uh, wait a minute. Lord Jesus, will you receive us into thy kingdom? The Bible says both those thieves for a period of time were mocking Jesus. And one of them came to his sense and said, Jesus. When you enter in your kingdom, can I come? Jesus said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. And that thief did not come down to receive the sacraments. That thief did not come down to get baptized. That thief never had an opportunity to witness. That thief had the opportunity to say, Jesus, I'm guilty of my sin, and Jesus forgave him of his sin. And then he did turn to the other thief and told the other thief about Jesus. You see, with the heart, man believes on the righteousness, with the mouth, confessions made unto salvation. And there's one thing that dying thief did was he witnessed to the other thief. But whatever that other thief had, he did not put his all in all in Jesus Christ. One thief died and went to glory. The other thief died and went into hell. One had Jesus. I don't know what the other one had. I don't know what you have. But if you don't have Jesus, you will go to hell. The Bible said that, not me. And if you get offended because of a man mentioned a four-letter word, word, word as hell, you need to come to Jesus and repent of your sins and get that pardon, to get your heart right, that you will not fear hell no longer by the blood and the testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ that he suffered and died according to the scriptures. He was buried and arose again the third day according to scriptures. God is so much better than alcohol. Alcohol, it gets consumed. And there's one or two ways you can release alcohol of your body. So in actuality, alcohol is a waste of money. It, it leaves your body within 24 hours. But Jesus Christ is forever. He's eternal. He's everlasting. And he doesn't cost you a thing to be saved. It's free, and it's with you for all eternity. And the fact is, if you were to die, the Bible says in Christ, you will depart this body, and you'll be with Jesus Christ forever. It never ends. 
It's the glory of God through Jesus Christ that you can be saved, and it doesn't cost you anything, it doesn't run out, and it's forever, and it's for eternal life. And that's by Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ alone. There is no salvation in any other. For there's no other way for a man to get to heaven but by Jesus Christ. The glory of God for salvation is not what we can do. It is what Jesus Christ has done. It's what the Word of God says. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's that simple. What's religion say? Do this, do that, do that, do this, hold this, huddle, go to this church, do that thing, go to that church, do this. No, the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. How simple. How simple. The pardon of God is that you must be guilty, and you are guilty whether you know it or not. When the Bible says all have sinned, that's you, that's me. You're a liar. You bear false witness. You dishonored your parents. Impatience. Those are sins that need to be plead to Jesus. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Money can't do it. Only by the blood of Jesus Christ can you be saved. It's that wonderful. It's that great. Not of silver or gold, but by the precious blood of the Lamb. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. To have your name put in the Lamb's book of life. By the testimony and by the finished work of Jesus Christ. Look what I got here. I got water. I got a nice bottle of water here. And I can consume all this water and have to get another one. And get another one. They come in cases of 12, cases of 24, a case is 30. And it costs money for this bottle of water. But Jesus said, I am the water of life. And that is free. <laughs> and it don't come tapped. And you can drink of the Spirit, you can drink of Jesus and never thirst again. That's what he told the woman in John chapter 4. Who is he talking to? He's talking to a woman who has had four husbands. And the one she was with right now wasn't her husband. And God offered her salvation. And she believed in that salvation. And she went to her city and she proclaimed who Jesus Christ was. And the men came out and got saved that afternoon in John chapter 4 and when you preach Jesus at Daytona Beach uh, I wish he'd shut up I wish he'd go away I wish he'd close that Bible I wish he wouldn't say anything I wish his creep would sing more stupid songs no, I wish you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved the love of God as God said to the preachers, to the men who are saved go in all the world and preach the gospel that's much better than anything else you are hearing the words of God. You are hearing what God wants. The water of life. It can't be bottled. It can't be sold. How about the bread of life? That's also Jesus Christ. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by the, the very word of God. Jesus Christ said, I am. That would get a Jewish person or Jehovah Witness angry. I am. Because you know in the Bible who said I am? God talking to Moses out of the burning bush. Jesus Christ proclaimed to the people that he is God. And he's the God that is sinless, that is able to save your soul. And any other God's a small G-O-D-S. And that God can't save you, whether it be religion, whether it be psychology, whether it be education, 
Would it be whatever it would it be if it's not Jesus Christ? You are not saved. And you are hopeless. You are dead in trespasses of sin. And you can end that right now. You can put your faith and trust in Jesus. You can receive that pardon. And that pardon can only be if you're guilty of your sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Well, look who I am. It ain't you. Look what I have done. It's not what you can do. It is what Jesus Christ has done. You know? It says in the Gospel of Luke, Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, Luke 15, Luke 16. The Bible says, And now he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeing Abraham afar off, and Lazarus his bosom. He cried, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, a man in hell, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and I cool my tongue. There is no relief in hell. The Bible says he was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. He was carried to heaven. You're not going to go home without Jesus Christ. Your home without Jesus Christ is a place of hell, of torments, of no mercy, no grace. And yet you can receive that grace. You can receive the gift of God by becoming pardoned. In order to be pardoned, you must be guilty. And the sentence and the answer of God is that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's that simple. And I'm telling you, if your church is in the roots of Esther or Easter, you got very poor roots. Because those roots are not found in the Bible. And you may have another Jesus, another spirit, and another gospel in your church that cannot save your soul. Just because you go to church, don't make you saved. The Bible proclaims that salvation rests upon Jesus Christ alone. Many people went to church, and there are seven churches in the church age of the book of Revelation, and they were rebuked. Church is not the answer. When Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Going to a priest. Judas went to the priest with his 30 pieces of silver, and he died. The Bible records he went unto his own place into hell. And Judas was a disciple who worked the miracles. But he couldn't save his soul. pardon can be obtained when you are guilty. And the guiltiness you stand before God is you have sinned. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There are none righteous. No, not one. And in your sins you have failed the accomplishment that God has intended man. Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. The Bible 
Romans chapter 10. A legend in my own mind. It says, let me find a verse. Guys, I want to go on to that in the first place. Today I just didn't think I could find And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is yeah, written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good, short good break things. Here. My name is Teddy Mack. You know, if you were pleasing and honoring God, you'd be standing here before the Word of God listening to it preach. Thank you for your... Hey, back in the early life of America, when the preachers got up and preached, everything was stopped to hear the preaching. There was a time that Billy Sunday that the bars and package stores were closed. There was a time that the theater houses would give the great preachers their theaters to preach the gospel. And you preach the gospel in 2019 and in America, and you just go about your business, just hoping the preacher will go away, hoping God is not real, hoping that my beads can do it, hoping my education will get me a better spot on my job, and then without the blessed hope, die in your sins and go to hell, because you will not receive the pardon by God. The, the gift of God is Jesus Christ. That's eternal life. Revelation chapter 4 says, as a created being, you were made to make God happy. You were made that God may be glorified. How are you doing? You've sinned. Get that pardon by saying you are the guilty sinner that Jesus Christ suffered and died for. You've lied. You bear false witness. You dishonored your parents or are dishonoring your parents. You're impatient. And you're not giving God the full benefit of what he made you for. Those are sins. And I haven't got to the big, big sins. I don't need to do the big, big sins. For all have sinned. Listen, when you go to hell without Jesus Christ, you will be in hell with the most wicked, violent sinners ever to be. And you'll be in hell with the most goodest people to be. Hell has a population of the very good to the very wicked vile. Hell is full of people who will not believe on Jesus Christ. That's the sin that will put you in hell. That you have not received that pardon to be guilty. You don't get that pardon being guilty before God and that the payment is Jesus Christ and His finished work. You will go to hell with all the sinners that will not believe on Jesus Christ. Whoever and whatever you may be. That plain and simple. Hell will have preachers and priests and Sunday school teachers and teachers and mayors and nice people and homeless and educators and not so educated, the worker, the mother, the children, hell will be filled with all those. And the common denominator of people in hell is they have not believed on Jesus Christ. Now you can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you can die and be absent from the body and present with glory. Now who is in glory? All those that put their faith in Jesus. All those that Jesus Christ pardoned because the people there are guilty. And then there is nothing else that could save your soul. And there's no other to glory but that in Jesus. Now 
I mean, the population after death is. You can be with the population that put their faith and their trust in the pardon and the finished work of Jesus Christ. You can be in that company. There are no sinners in that company. When we get the glory, we'll get a sinless body. Or you can go to hell and be with every sinner that's unwashed. There are no clean sinners in hell. They have not been washed. That the words of Jesus Christ will be, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you, so when you're cast off in the lake of fire, you're still iniquitor, if that's a word. Add that. Iniquitor. That's a good word, iniquitor. It's the same thing as being a sinner. That's a word. Do you know how vile all your sins are? Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. He is the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. You can have the grace and the knowledge and the pardon of God through Jesus Christ. Hey, this is a little number I wrote. It's called, uh, it's called Whiskey Come a Calling. You can be called by God through Jesus Christ. And the glorious of the hymns that can be sung before God. Rather than the drums of Baal. The worship of God through Jesus Christ. The pardon. Remember, a pardon cannot be obtained unless you are guilty. And you've got to repent and bring forth your guiltiness before God to be washed in Jesus Christ. There is no other way. There is no other hope. Except that of Jesus Christ and only Jesus Christ. One day, one day you'll taste of death. And for many, you will not know when that day comes. Many do not wake up and say, oh, today is the day. Some will. I know a few who, told, who said that this was their day, and it was. But when death comes, and you have not received the pardon of God through Jesus Christ, you will wake up in hell. If you trust and get the pardon of Jesus Christ, you will be absent from the body and present with the Lord. And life has only just begun when life will have no end in heaven or hell. Are you in pain? In glory there is no more pain. You got sorrow? In glory God will wipe away all tears and you'll never get them back. How's your body doing? How about through Jesus Christ in glory? The Bible says you'll get a brand new body. It won't break down. It won't age. In glory, you'll never sin again. In glory, you'll have a voice that will last forever to praise God. I had another drink of Jesus and great and wonder it could do out past whiskey. The water of life through Jesus Christ. Oh, how refreshing. How wonderful. It don't make me burn. It makes me cry out the name of Jesus Christ. There's no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. That name is Jesus Christ.
the salvation of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, would take away the sin of the world if you come to God guilty. To receive that pardon that lasts forever. And through Jesus Christ, you will leave your father the devil as God will adopt you into his family. And you will be a child of God, a son of God. By that pardon you receive of Jesus Christ. And that pardon of God can only be if you're guilty. You must be guilty before God. And with that pardon, you're able to be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? Hell. Misery. Torment. Torture. That loving God that you reject will say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. You can be freed of your sins through Jesus Christ. Or you can burn in hell pain for your sins by anything else. It's believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's that simple. It's that simple. It's Jesus will save. It's Jesus will pay. And it's Jesus the blessed hope. You can have the pleasures of sin for a season here. But when you got to pay for them for all eternity, there'll be no pleasure. You see, the worldly pleasure of sin is only a season. I forget how it was expressed in Matthew 4, but when the devil showed Jesus all the kingdoms, I think it said all but a moment of time. Man, that's a very short time. A season is a very short time. If you're going to be in suffering and torments forever. And you need not. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Didn't say believe in religion. It didn't say science or education, evolution. It said Jesus Christ. That is all. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me is written in the pages of the Bible. It's not written in a textbook. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. It's not found in the Koran. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, is not upon the teacher's lips of the schools. Jesus saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me is not spoken out of the leaders of the world. It is spoken by the Holy Word of God, the Bible, which God wrote. Yes, man wrote the Bible. Man is the pen and the Holy Spirit is the ink. Death is coming. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's that simple. Out of the pages of the Bible. The Word of God. Shame if you don't believe it to be so. 
For who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? He shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when he shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and he esteemed him not. I'm reading about Jesus Christ. Surely he has borne our griefs <coughs> and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he is wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like the sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened up. This is about the Lord Jesus Christ that is able to save your soul. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, as a sheep dumb before his shearers, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. And for transgression of my people was he stripped. Listen, this is about Jesus Christ suffering and dying for our sins according to the scriptures. And there's more. Not of a bone was broken. They plowed his back. They pulled the hair of his face. They whipped him that you might have eternal life if you come to be pardoned and to be pardoned you must be guilty you can't take it away you can't wish it away you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved you must come to the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world There is no other remedy. There is no other wash but the washing of the Word. Of that, the finished work of Jesus Christ who suffered and died according to the Scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. That's God's way of salvation. For a man that was created to please God that will go into hell because he will not. He will not put his faith in trust. He will not receive that pardon that's being preached today. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I hope I'm going to heaven. The Bible says, these things I write unto you that you may know you have eternal life. Don't hope so. Know so. Religion is not going to save your soul. You will die in your sins and you'll suffer and burn in hell because you will not believe on Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me but by the Father. So, how dare you come to God with religion? Jesus is not religion. How dare you come to God with knowledge when you have no knowledge of the holy through Jesus? How dare you proclaim any other Savior 
but that which is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is God. Look around you. You see all that produce? That came from God. And I bet you're not even going to thank Him for it. Amen. But to truly thank God in Revelation chapter 4 is give God the glory. That's what we were created for. And to give glory and to thank God and to please God is through Jesus Christ. You may say grace, but do you have the grace of God through Jesus Christ? Do you know where you will go when you die? I already told you, don't hope so, know so. If I were to ask you what will get you to heaven if it's not Jesus Christ, you don't go to heaven. How narrow-minded is God? I'll tell you. The word of Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There's your answer to religion, education. Your pardon of your sins that you are guilty of. Uh, rest upon the blood of Jesus Christ which cleanses from all sin. And guess what? It's in writing. It's in black and white and it's also red and white. In the pages of the Bible, God speaks about your pardon and signs it with the blood of Jesus Christ. In Acts 20, 28, that blood is God's blood. And it says it's able to purchase you if you receive that pardon that you're guilty of the sins that you are doing. And the number one sin you're doing right now is rejecting Jesus Christ. That's the sin that will cast you into hell forever. Right over here. I think we've got some left. Forever. You know, you might want to hurry if you want. Are you able to get the glory? And not of yourselves. It's the gift of God. Forever is the word of God settled in heaven. Right here. This is in heaven. So is Jesus Christ. And so can you if you put your pardon in the finished work of Jesus Christ that you are guilty of your sins and repent and get right. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's that simple. Those who do get to heaven, we're not going to glorify you. Bible read, of course, we're going to get a new name in heaven. But oh, the brand new body. Unlike this weak body I have. A brand new mind without sin. For this wicked mind that I have now. A brand new clean heart. And Jesus said, out of the heart comes the sins. And go ahead and name them. But out of the heart right now is the heart that to reject Jesus Christ in his pardon. That will be forever. Glory to God and honor. And that honor and glory is through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. 
and thou shalt be saved. That's simple.